Okay, there we go. So, so this is number 22. So how do we, how do, we do those? What, what's that big Greek symbol mean? The sum, huh? It's a big S, isn't it? It's a big Greek S. So this means, this symbol means the sum of, of the formula there, the sum of the 8 minus a half N from N equals 1 to N equals 120, right? That's what that means. The, the bottom number is the start. The top number is the end. So you go from 1 to 120. You're going to plug in to the, to the 8 minus a half N formula. You're going to plug in 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So I suggest let's just do a couple. So N equals 1, N equals 2, dot, dot, dot. N equals 120, the last one. Really, all we... Um, yeah, I think we can just do the first and the last. All right. So when we plug that in, we plug in n equals 1, we get 8 minus a half times 1, which is 8 minus a half. You can just do decimals. I'm fine. 7.5 decimal. Right? Like that. And then plug in 2 if you want. I don't know. I'm going to go all the way to 120. Eight, I'm going to just plug in the last one. I think that's all we need is the first and the last in the formula, right? If I'm remembering the formula, right? 8 minus 60. What's that? Minus 52. So there's the first number, the last number, you know, and they're added. Plus, plus, da, 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 plus. We're adding up all, supposed to kind of went up high here. They're, we're adding up all those numbers. Does that make sense? That's what that big Greek symbol is saying. It's saying add up this formula as you plug in 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, because all the way to 120. So when you plug in 1, you get 7.5. When you plug in 2, I don't know what you get. But, you know, I went ahead and went to the last one, plug in 120 and negative 52. I'm supposed to add all those up. Now, I gave you a formula, which will be on the top of exam uh, four. When's exam four? We had a couple weeks still, two weeks from today. So we got a little bit of time for that. And it says the sum. I remember, remember there's A sub n and S sub n formulas? You guys have been thinking about this all, all spring break, right? What? Every day. What? Right, Thea? What? You were thinking about a sub n and s sub n oh, yeah. and summation point. All right, thank you. All right. Just lie to me. I feel better that way. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I'm reminding you, because I'm assuming you have not, of course. I didn't do a lot of math thinking either. A sub n is whenever, whenever they, um, well, they, they, when they have commas in between. In other words, it's not a sum. They're not being added. They're just listed with commas. S sub n is when, when there's sum, there's plus signs in the middle, right? Remember that difference? So whenever you see a list, if they go like 3, comma 7, comma 11, comma 15, you're going up by 4 every time. But just with commas, that would be a sub n. If they go 3 plus 7 plus 11 plus 15 plus da, 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 that would be s sub n. <coughs> right? Remember the plus signs in the middle, we always use the s sub n formulas. The commas in the middle, we use the a sub n formulas. So this one is certainly s sub n because we're adding these, right? We have the uh, plus signs. It's a, and, and it's a big Greek S for sum. So we're going to use the S sub n formula, not the A sub n. And the S sub n formula says n over 2 times A1 plus A n, right? It'll be right at the top of the next exam in a couple of weeks. And remember what the different things mean. n is the number of terms. A1 is the first term. A n is the last term. Remember all that? So S sub n equals number of terms over 2. What is n? What is the number of terms? How many terms are here? 120, huh? Does that make sense? There's 120 terms. You're plugging in 1, plugging in 2, plugging in 3, all the way to 120. You're going to get 120 different terms, different numbers, right? 120 over 2. First term, 7.5. Last term, negative 52, negative 52. So there it is. Crank that out. What is that going to be? 60 times some number minus something. 42.5. Was it 44.5? Times 60. Uh, 2,000 something minus 2,000. Is it? Anybody got 2670? 2670? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minus 2670. And there we go. We were able to add up 120 numbers that quick. 
with that little formula. That's what we're doing. Is that good? We, we talked about how Gauss came up with that formula, right? His little trickery. All right, so minus 2670. Questions on doing that? So when they give you the big Greek S, you know S sub n right away. Find the first term, find the last term, plug them into the formula. Okay, well, let's move on. All right, try that. Find the sum of the first 90 terms. Probably a good idea just to write down the formula right away. S sub n, n over 2, a1 plus a n. And again, n is number of terms. A, a sub 1 is first term. A sub n is last term. All right, give that a try. See if you can sum of the first 90 terms in that sequence. So, what is n, first off? That's 90, huh? Because that's number of terms. There are 90 terms. What's the first term? Yeah, that's the 14. No mystery there. But what's the last term? Yeah, we've got to use the other formula, right? We don't know what the last term is. So we got to use, to find the last term, which is a sub n, use the a sub n formula, huh? What's the a sub n formula? a1 plus n minus 1d. Remember that one? I'll give you that one at the top of the exam for in love. So use that one real quick. Find the a sub n and then bring it back, plug it in, and wrap up the So a sub 1 again, first term, 14. n again is 90, right? n is number of terms, like it always is. There's 90 terms. Um, minus 1 times d. What's the d? What's the difference? d means difference or jump from term to term. Yeah, it's 2, huh? 14 to 16, it adds 2 to 18, adds 2, except it's just adding 2 every time. Everybody good with that? The D is 2, the difference, the jump. So then A sub N is 14 plus 89 times 2. What's that? 180 minus 2, 180, 72. 78, is that what it is? 192. So bring that over. 192 is the last term. In that sequence, bring it back to the S sub N formula, finish it up. 45, and this one, 86, 206, is that what it is? And then multiply that together. It's like 9,000 something? What is it? Sounds right. We were able to add up all those numbers that quick using the S sub n formula. you got a little power. That's the purpose of math. By following the pattern, you can do something powerful quickly. Good on that? Questions? Are you okay with all this A sub n, S sub n stuff? This will be a, a little more tricky. All right. So in other words, x plus 5 is the first one, and then 5x plus 1 is the second one. 4x plus 5 is the next one. Da, da, da. Find x so that those are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. What in the world are they talking about? Let me give you a minute. It'll be more fun if you can figure it out. The whole key, let me give you a hint. Arithmetic sequence. They're saying it is an arithmetic sequence. It is. 
What does that mean if I say, hey, I'm writing some numbers on the board or on the thing, and they are an arithmetic sequence? What happens in an arithmetic sequence? What happens from term to term? Common difference. It adds up, it adds the same, yeah, common difference. It adds the same amount or subtracts every time, right? So from here to here, call it D, call it jump, call it Tom, whatever, you know, whatever it is, it's adding, I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it's adding the same amount every time. Or another way to say it is if you subtract them, their difference will be the same every time. Right? There's two ways to say the same thing, right? catch me on that? that if, if that's truly an arithmetic sequence, which they're saying it is, that means if I take the second term minus the first term, that um, difference I get will be the same thing as if I take the third term minus the second term. It's the same difference every time, isn't it? Right? Same difference every time. So what? How does that help me solve for x? Well, just do exactly that. Take 5x plus 1 minus x plus 5, right? Second term minus first term. And that's got to equal the third term. Yeah, this is third here. This is second. This is first. That's got to equal the third term minus the second. See that? Doesn't second minus first have to equal third minus second because it's an arithmetic sequence? Because it's going up by the same amount every time? that make sense? So that's a little equation I can solve for x. So I got to remember to distribute the minus sign in front of a parenthesis, right? So 5x plus 1 minus x minus 5, and 4x plus 5 minus 5x minus 1. 5x minus x is 4x, 1 minus 5 is minus 4, 4x minus 5x is minus x, 5 minus 1 is 4, Get to there. Good so far. It's combined like terms on both sides. Solve for x. So uh, i got to get rid of one of these x's. So let me add x to both sides. Gonzo. So then I get 5x minus 4 is 4. Going over here. I'm running out of room. Probably going to go off the screen. Is that on the screen? Barely. Okay. Add 4. 5x is 8. Divide by 5. Boom. x is 8 fifths. See how we did that? If it's a common difference, then second minus first has got to be third minus second. The difference has got to be equal. The two differences have to be equal, common, equal. Eight-fifths, is that the right answer? That one's interesting. Questions? I, I don't want to race past that too quick. Is that okay? Other questions I can answer on that? Common difference question? We good? All right. So um, let's... Go to another. So here's another tricky one. How many terms must be added in an arithmetic sequence whose first term is 18 and whose common difference is 6 to obtain a sum of 56, 58? So now they're, they're being all tricky with this. They're giving us like, you know, creative questions. These aren't cookie cutter notes. The other ones I gave you the cookie cutter format. You just follow the exact cookie cutter plan. You can do all the other ones. These ones at the end are creative. They're giving you a sum, so how about bring out the S sub n formula? It's a good place to start, right? So, you know, they're going to use the S sub n, right, because they're giving you a sum, Oops, a1 plus a n. They're telling you that, fit, what is it, 56, 58. So the sum, 56, 58, must equal n over 2 a1 plus a n, right? So just kind of get going that way. Lots of, that's what I would do in math, science questions, I had no idea, you know, I would just start. I learned that it helps me just to start, you know, sometimes I would just read them and stare at them and do nothing for 20 minutes or half an hour, and that, I noticed that never worked. <clears throat> Trying to think the whole plan in my head, that never worked. Just kind of jump in, write the formula, plug some stuff in, and then thoughts start to come to you. That's how you, 
it would work with these things. So it's right there. Yeah, now let's start looking piece by piece. Do we, do we know in? No, in fact, that's what they're asking for. How many terms? Remember, in is number of terms. That's what they're asking for. How many terms? So no way do I know that. That's going to be like the final answer, right? You with me? So n's my letter. I want to leave n in, and that's what I'm going to solve for. Because right? that's what they're asking for. How many terms? What's the total number of terms, right? I just want to be clear on word problems. What is the question? What do they want from me in the end? If you don't know what you're supposed to come up with at the end, you're going to have trouble arriving there if you don't know where you're going, right? So that's where we're going. We're trying to find n. So now a1, do I know the first term? Remember, A1 means first, AN means last. Yeah, first term is 18. We got that. Good. So now we just need the last term. Do we know the last term? No, we're clueless. We're sunk. Not really, though. We can do something. What do we do? What do we always do when we don't know the last term? Use the ace of n formula. What is the ace of n formula? A1 plus n minus 1d. Now, let's use that. Okay, here we go. A1, again, first term, that's 18. Plus n, remember, I don't know n. That's the whole point. I'm trying to find n at the end. What's the d? Six. six. Yeah, they're telling me that. So in other words, a sub n is 18 plus, distribute that 6, 6n six minus 6. In other words, 18 minus 6 is 12 plus 6n. That's what a sub n is. Grab that, bring her back. 12 plus 6n. See what I did there? This is a 1. This all is a sub n, isn't it? And now I have a formula with just n. Although it's a little bit messy. It's going to require a fair bit of work. It's now possible, right? Got a big old formula. There's only one letter. That's what I mean by possible. We can't have two different letters. That's not possible. Well, you need two equations if you have two letters. We have one equation, one letter, so that's possible. So can you solve this? You know the first thing I would do? I don't like fractions. I don't know how you feel about fractions. <coughs> multiply, multiply by two, get rid of that. Right? Get rid of that two right off the bat. Multiply both sides by two. Multiply by two. It just cancels, and that's some other big number. I need your help here. What is... 5658. What is it again? 11,360. 11, thank you. No, 316. 316. 316, okay. 316. Like that. Whoops, now I'm trying to scribble it. All right, 11,316 is n. And then 18 and 12 is a 30 plus 6n. We good to there? Just got rid of the fractions. Distribute the n. 30n plus 6n squared, 11, 316. Everybody good? 18 and 12 made 30 there, right? What now? Yeah, because whenever we see n squared or x squared, we've got to get a zero. Try to factor or quadratic formula. One or the other. So these are the more advanced questions right here at the end. So get a zero. So this I'm going to put these in the right order. 6n squared plus 30n minus 11,316, right? We good there? I just, I just subtracted that over. Everybody okay? I'll bring it up here and try to wrap it up. Okay, so bring it up here. So what do we got? We got zero is, I need more room here. Zero is 6n squared plus 30n minus 11, 316. Oh, uh, we got to try to factor that thing, I guess. You know, quad might be easier. Oh, factor out of 6? Does 6 go in? Oh, that'll make it nicer. Okay, we'll, we'll give that a try. 
n squared plus 5n, and what's that? 1886. All right. Yeah, good. Got that. Now we can, now it's still hard to factor somewhat, but now it's calculatable. What I mean is take your calculator, on your calculator, take the 1886, and remember, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 1886 and add to be 5, right? So you take the 1886 and you just try dividing on your calculator by different numbers. I mean, I don't know either off the top of my head. But I would try something like 12, I don't know, 20. Can't you divide by the variable, divide by x, and then just look at your list or your table, divide? Divide by the x? What x? Well, if you're using the calculator, if you're using like the calculator that has a variable in it, you can divide by x, and then look at the table value, and you can see the Oh, value. nice. I never thought about doing that, Robert. Nice. That's probably a much better way to go, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, I would just try guessing around because I don't know about that fancy. That sounds good, though. Yeah, on the calculator, divide by X. Um, so, and, and I, what I do is I try for a couple minutes. If I can't get it, I do the quad, the quadratic formula, the negative B plus or minus. That'll always work. I'm not sure which one you guys want to do. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do the quad. If you don't like you try, try dividing with things in your calculator. Um, if not, I'm going to get rid of that 6, right? You can divide both sides by 6, by by 6, right? 0 is n squared plus 5n minus 1886, right? Just divide that 6 out of there on both sides. Now it's quad time. So a is 1, b is 5, c is minus 1886. Quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You guys got that memorized? You can put it on a 3 by 5 card. Uh, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Am I off the screen? Minus 1886, barely on. All over 2a. What's a? 1. Okay. That is ugly. 41, <laughs> Is that what it is? Okay, I'm going to come over here as so I'm running out of room again. This is like a several page question here. All right, so um, it's negative 5 plus or minus square root of 25 plus, right? Because two negatives, negative and negative, make positive. Something big. What's 4 times 1886? Just under 8,000, 7,000 something. 7544. Thank you. 7544 all over 2. Negative 5 plus or minus. 75.69 over 2. And that's rootable, I assume. What is it? What's the root of 75.69? 87? Thank you. So negative 5 plus or minus 87 all over 2. Then you just do those two options. Negative 5 plus 87 over 2. And negative 5 minus 87 over 2. That's 82 over 2, 41, like Robert said, 41. And the other one is minus 92 over 2, minus 46. Did I do that right? Yeah. All right, so we got my two answers. Which one do you think is right? Yeah, why is that? Yeah, how many terms did you have? Negative 46. We had negative number of terms. Right? You can't do that. Remember, math doesn't live in the real world. Math just runs numbers. Remember, whenever you're doing word problems, you've got to keep one foot in reality because math is just running numbers. It doesn't know anything about the universe in which we exist, and you cannot have a negative amount of items. Right? How many donuts did you eat? Negative three. What does that mean? That's not possible, right? How many terms do you have? Negative 46. Can't do that. So we just throw that away. Math is just saying, hey, them numbers work. That's all math is doing. And we say they don't work in our world. 41. 41 terms. Let's go type that in. I want to see that work. All these ones at the end are very difficult. These are the most difficult. Let's try this one. Drury Lane Theater. Or Drury. Drury Lane Theater. Ten seats in the first row, 38 rows, and all these are broken into one additional seat. How many seats in the theater? Do you understand what they're saying? It's like they have, they have ten seats, and then each successive row has one additional seat. Like, it's like, it gets like a little wider, 
and then you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's like a big triangle seating, you know, it kind of goes up like a lot of those kind of places do, right? More, you know, more and more seats in each row, one more seat in each row. And it's got 38, 38 rows all together. So that's something you could do at a theater real quick. You could say, look, a front row has 10, next row has 11, 12, then go, there's 38 rows. How many total seats in this whole theater? With this math that we've been learning, you can calculate that real quick. Sounds like? One. Starts with 10, then 11, then 12, right? A triangle. More, more, more. 38 rows in all. So you can find out how many seats. Which form is, are, is this an A submit or an S submit? Yeah. Probably both eventually. But like, what's our main one? What's the main yeah. S? Because we're adding up all those seats. We want a total number of seats on some. So yeah, mainly S submit, but probably end up using both. You're right. So start, but start with the main attraction, you know, the main one you're trying to answer. Be S sub n, right? You want the sum. Basically, you're saying, I want to add up the numbers 10, 11, 12, dot, dot, dot. Right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to add up the numbers 10, 11, 12, dot, dot, dot. So try that. See what you can do. And remember, n is the number of terms. A one's the first, A sub n's the last. What's the number of terms? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Banging the cord there. <laughs> Thirty eight. We'll never see it again now. It's gone. Thirty eight. Right? Because there's thirty eight rows. So there's thirty eight terms. Thirty eight terms in this list, because every term goes with a row, right? What's the first? 10. What's the last? Other formula. Like Robert was saying. A1 plus N minus 1D. Right? Got to use the A sub N formula. So it's A1, which is 10. Number of terms, 38 minus 1 times D. What's the D? 1. It's just 1, huh? The difference from term to term is just 1. 10 plus 37 <laughs> times 1, so a sub n is just 47. That means there's 47 seats in the last row, huh? There's our formula. On that? Yeah. Okay, the way I did it was, you know there's 38 rows, uh -huh. so you take out one row because you know the 10, and then you add 37 to the 10, and then you get the last number, which is 47, instead of having to plug everything into the formula. Wait, say that one more time. So you so there's 38 rows. 38 rows. And we know row the row with 10 seats is a row. So you subtract one from 38, you get 37, and then you add the remaining 37 to the 10, and then you know that the last one is 47 seats. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Did you understand that? So what what, what Tim was saying is, if the first row has 10, and you're going to go up by one every time, 38 rows. That means 37 more rows. That's so what he's saying with the subtract one. 37 more rows after the first row. So 37 times you're going to add 1. So 10 at 37, 47. That's exactly what the formula is doing with the n minus 1. Exactly. Yeah? Three or somewhere, it's a sedan plus 9. A sedan plus 9. Why is it plus 9? 1 plus 9 is 10. 2 plus 9 is 11. Oh, oh, so you're saying just uh, just go back and then you can just add the 38? Yeah. Is that, that what you're saying? So if you go to 38, you just yeah, right, because that take that does the back one for you that way. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Those are both good ways They are. Yep. Either way will work. So nineteen times fifty seven, what's our final answer? How many seats in that theater? Two thousand? One thousand eighty three. Ten eighty three. There we go. Look what we can do with this math. Questions on that? It's hard ones at the end. I don't know if we have time more. All right, so we're in 12.3. We're supposed to finish that tomorrow. So we'll be due on Wednesday. All right, so 12.3, geometric sequences and series. So here we go. It's going to be very similar to the last section.
Uh, except from term to term, we're going to multiply instead of add. That's basically the difference. And we're going to get a new A sub n formula and a new S sub n formula. All right. Uh, find the common ratio and write out the first four terms of the given geometric sequence. So let's just, they basically, they want A1, they want A2, they want A3, they want A4. You know, they want the first four terms. So they got that little formula there. A sub n is 7 to the n power. So when you plug in 1, you get 7 to the 1, which is just 7. You plug in 2, you get 7 squared, which is 49. You plug in 3, you get, is that 243? Yeah. 243, 7 to the 4th, 841, no, I don't know. 2401. I'm like miles off. 2401. Is that good? I cranked out the first four terms, right? I just took their little formula, plugged in 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, they, they want not only those first four terms, but they want the common, notice it does it's say difference. Like it's been saying, it says common ratio. Ratio. So in other words, if I list these numbers, 7, right, this is A1, A2, 749, 243, 2401. You know, if I list those numbers, they're not adding the same number every time, are they? What are they doing every time? Multiplying by 7. Comment? Question? Uh, isn't it oh, I think you're right. I messed up, huh? Yeah, good. I think that's right. Thank you. Times 7 every time. Yeah, it's going times 7 every time, isn't it? So this is the difference. This is what this section is all about compared to the last section. So the last section, we were always adding the same number or subtracting the same number, right? Adding positive or negative number every time. This time we're going to multiply or divide the same thing, right? We're going to multiply or divide the same number every time. And this is called a geometric sequence instead of an arithmetic, right? Arithmetic, adding, subtracting. Those other ones were called arithmetic. You added the same number every time or subtracted. This is geometric. All right, so you're multiplying by 7 every time. That is the common, common ratio. We call it, why do we call it the common ratio? Why don't we just call it the common multiplier? How is it a common it could be called the common multiplier. That's also true. But how is it true that, that it is a common ratio? Ratio. What does ratio mean? It's a ratio over the numbers of the numbers. Yeah, it's one number over a number. Ratio is a dividing, like a fraction, isn't it? What are they talking about? I want you to know it doesn't matter on this one. I mean, we're done with this one, but in, in moments to come, it'll be helpful. It means if you take any term over the previous, over, ratio, over, you'll get the same answer. Take 243 over 49, for example you'll also get 7, because it's multiplying by 7 every time. So if you divide, if you ratio any 2, it'll be a common answer, 7. That's how, when they get ugly here, in the, well, because it's going to be tomorrow, when, the, when we get to the ugly ones, and you're like, I have, you can't you be able to tell what the R is, because they're so messy looking, I'm going to say, just take the second term, and put it over the first term, and you'll find the ratio. That would be the, that would be the easy way, when things get ugly. All right. It's one of the trickier ones. All right, let's try this one. That's a pretty ugly looking formula. So really, you know, you know how they're asking for the ratio right away? I wouldn't do that first, even though that's the first question. I would first just find the four terms, and then I think it's easier to get the ratio afterwards. So what's the first term? 7 to the 1 minus 1 over 8 to the 1. Right, I just plugged in 1 for n which is 7 to the 0 over 8, which is 1 8. There's the first term. We good? So far, I just plugged in 1 for n to that formula. Now plug in 2. So what's that? It's going to be 7 to the 1 over 64. 7 64 A sub 3, plug in 3. 3 minus 1 over 8 to the 3. 7 squared over, what is that? 512. 49 over 512. And finally, a sub 4. You guys know what I'm doing? Am I just racing ahead doing my own thing here? Is this making sense? 7 to the 3rd over 8 to the 4th. Which is some big number. Three, there's that 343 again. Four, four, is it 4,096? Is that okay right there? What I did. 
So I just, right, I just took their formula, 7 to the n minus 1 power over 18, and I plugged in 1, 2, 3, and 4. And cranked out the first four terms. They get big fast, huh, with these geometric sequences. Now, for the more tricky question, what's the common ratio? <clears throat> Can you tell? Good. Yeah, take the second term and divide it by the first. Right? Everybody with me on that? Because it's a ratio. So to find the common ratio, what you always do is take, whoops, second term over the first term. That's the easiest way. You can take, you can take any term over the previous term because it's common. Easiest would be second term over first term. In other words, what you're asking is, what was this guy multiplied by to become that guy? It's times what? Can you tell us by looking? One-eighth times what will become seven-sixty-fourths? Seven-eighths, huh? Yeah, that's going to be the answer. Let's, let's get it formally. Second term would be seven-sixty-fourths over the first term, one-eighth. Can you see that up there okay? Seven-sixty-fourths. Now, how do you... How do you, this is going to come up a lot in this section, how do you deal with a fraction over a fraction? How do you deal with 760, the answer is going to be 7 eighths, we already know. But how do you, how do you deal with 764ths over 1 eighth? The bottom one flips up, remember that? Because it's divided, you flip the one on the right. Remember that whole thing? It's going to come up a lot. Use that in calculus a lot too. So it becomes times 8 over 1, like that. You flip it upside down. And then that cross cancels 8 and 64. There it is, 7 eighths, just like we already knew. 7 eighths. It's being multiplied by 7 eighths every time. That good? That okay? Questions on that? Okay. All right. So they're giving me, um, find the, f it's funny they call that A. Do they mean A sub 1? Find the fifth term and the nth term. Oh, whose initial term A. Yeah, I guess I just got to read the words. I would prefer they said A sub 1, but. They can call it Joe if they want to. They're saying it's the first term. So, all right. Just a little funny. They changed up their notation system. All right. So, anyway, I'll quit complaining. We'll, we'll, we'll go with the problem. So, uh, type the fifth term. Okay. Hmm. Type the fifth term. And um, find the fifth term. And it wants the nth term. Okay. I haven't given you the formula for this one yet. Let me, let me give it to you. A sub n. Remember the other formula? What was the other a sub n formula? It was a1 plus n minus 1 d, right? This one, instead of d, is going to use r for ratio instead of difference. And then everything else is going to be raised up a level. Instead of um, n1 times r, well, I can't even remember to tell you the truth. It's going to be, oh yeah, R, um, I do remember. It's going to be A1, R to the N minus 1. Yeah. I, and this is the kind of thing I wish we had more time to talk about. It's interesting to me. Basically, everything is raised up one level. Let me at least just say it. What do I mean by one level? Do you ever think about the operations in math like a hierarchy? What I mean is multiplying and, I'm sorry, adding. You know, what's the first thing you learn when you're young in math? Adding and subtracting, right? Then you got a little older and you learn multiplying and dividing. They're a level above because multiplying is repeated adding, isn't it? Three times two is three is two added three times, right? And dividing is repeated spread. They're a level up. And what's above multiplying? Powers, like two to the third power because that's repeated multiplying, isn't it? Well, they're like on a hierarchy system. Well, geometric sequences, which we're now doing in this section, are one level above arithmetic, right? Arithmetic, we're adding, subtracting, right? So all the formulas were on that level. And I don't mean they didn't have multiplying in them, but I mean, I'll show you what I mean. Now we're going up to geometric, which is the basis of a geometric sequence is things are multiplied or divided from term to term. That means all the formulas are going to naturally be cranked up a level. Now, what do I mean by cranked up a level? Look at this formula. A1 is what? Added. So how do you crank up adding one level? Times. See? The new formula, it's A1 times instead of adding. Now, R with N minus 1. Uh, it, maybe it would help if I wrote it this way. You can write it either way, right? N minus 1 times R, R times. That is R times N minus 1. How do you crank multiplying up a level? How? See how everything is just cranked up a level? 
the same formula otherwise. All right, anyway, you don't have to memorize it or know that at all. I'll put it right at the top of the next exam. That was just for fun. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, so there's the formula. So we're going to have an A sub n and an S sub n for this section also. They'll be all, well, all of them will be at the top of the next exam. So there's our formula. So that's what they want you to type in later. Here they want A sub 5. So let's find A sub 5. Let's plug in 5. Whoops, i got to plug in A1. What's A1? That's the negative 4, isn't it? The A1 is what they're calling A. I wish they would just call it A1. R. Do I know R? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's right there, isn't it? 7, right there. Kind of wrote over it. And n minus 1 times, and then n minus 1. So that'll be 5 minus 1. The n is 5, huh? For a sub 5, a sub n. Everybody good? I'm trying to find the fifth term. So I'm plugging in 5 for n. So a sub 5 is minus 4, 7 to the fourth. So a sub 5 is minus 4 times some big number, which I don't know. Oh, yeah, 2401 or something. Yeah. Is that it? We did that a minute ago, huh? So a sub 5 is minus 8, no, 9604. Is that it? 9604. We got a sub 5. There's a sub 5. And um, in addition, to, that's the first thing they want is a sub 5. And then in part 2, they're going to want from us a sub n. What's a sub n? Well, again, it's a1, r to the n minus 1. Oops, that's kind of funny the way I wrote that. Um, and then they want, what was a sub 1? Negative 4, r is 7. So there, n minus 1, there's what they want you to type in in part 2. The general a sub n formula, and here's the fifth term from that formula. There's the two answers they want. Is that good? So we have a new formula, an a sub n formula.